We're following breaking news for you right now. Here's a live picture. Police are in pursuit of a stolen party bus. Yeah, let's go straight to Mark Kono. He is overhead in Sky 5 with the latest. Mark. Well, the latest is that, that this limo bus was apparently uh, stolen uh, apparently out of San Diego from what we gather here. And, uh, initially, uh, the reporting party, we understand, was the owner of the actual limo bus, and the uh, owner of the bus was actually following it for a time now. I don't know that that is still the case, but I can tell you that the CHP has certainly picked up on it. And this is uh, where we are right now. We're northbound on the 5 freeway, just coming up uh, past the 405, so coming into the northern part of the San Fernando Valley here. So uh, Silmar up towards the 210 freeway, in towards the Newhall Pass. That's kind of the direction that we're headed at this point here. Northbound side of the 5, a stolen limo bus that we believe may have been stolen out of the San Diego area here. And again, it was picked up by uh, West LA uh, officers of the CHP here. And now we are northbound again on the 405 freeway. It did come through this pull of it pass out of West LA, out of Mar Vista, and now all the way up towards the uh, uh, up towards the Newhall Pass. So we're just about a mile away from the 210 freeway as we approach uh, the Newhall Pass from the south here. So we're coming up 5 freeway northbound. We just passed Roxford, and we'll be coming up on the 210 freeway next. Beyond that, if he chooses to stay on the 5 freeway, and it certainly uh, seems like it might be the case, uh, he will be uh, joining uh, the Newhall Pass, and he has an option, of course, to stay on the 5 or go over towards the 14 freeway into the Santa Clarita Valley. So, again, something we will know in the course of the next couple of minutes here, but, uh, again, someone who is uh, still uh, resistant to pulling over uh, at this time here. It's a big limo bus that you can see there, the CHP following closely behind at least two units of the CHP uh, that are tracking uh, this thing as close as they can here. And uh, again, he looks like he's passed up the opportunity to get on the 210 freeway, so it looks like we'll be heading in towards the Newhall Pass, 5 freeway northbound, just crossing the 210 freeway at this time here. So uh, into the Newhall Pass we go, in towards the Santa Clarita Valley, in towards Newhall, and we'll see where this uh, stolen party bus, or the stolen limo bus, uh, takes us in the next few minutes here. Guys, let me send it back down to you. Yeah, and the information okay, that we... The information that we have is it started around 11:45 with this stolen party bus that got onto the freeway, the 405 North at Wilshire. Uh, we believe there is one occupant inside. We believe the bus is stolen, and CHP is in pursuit. Uh, the driver of the vehicle going in the 70s, upward of 70, 80 miles per hour. Now at this point, going on the 5 North, uh, passing through the exit for Palmdale for Lancaster. So headed north, showing no signs of. of Yielding to CHP authorities, and it's not every day we see a party bus at all involved right. in any kind of a pursuit that we're covering. Yeah, and as Mark Kono was saying, it's believed that this bus came from the San Diego area, and the owner of the party bus is actually pursuing it for some time. It's unclear if he's still is some somewhere behind uh, this bus as this chase ensues, but it makes you wonder, you know, the circumstances surrounding the very beginning of this chase, and I'm sure we'll learn more details as we follow along with this this morning. Okay, it's getting onto the 14 North, headed towards Palmdale and Lancaster. So uh, the party bus has gone a bit of a distance since we first started following this around 1145. So now it's been about 30 minutes. The party bus getting on the 14 North, headed towards Santa Clarita, and beyond that would be Palmdale and Lancaster, and showing no signs of, of getting over. You see the CHP vehicle there with its lights on and yeah. that party bus. Kind of a calm pursuit. Let's throw it back up to Mark Kono and Sky 5 to hear the latest. Mark. Well, there you go. Uh, just uh, made the crossover switch from the 5 freeway over to the 14. So here we go into the Newhall area uh, as uh, we kind of follow this stolen limo bus that uh, is apparently stolen out of San Diego here. The reporting party was the owner and uh, not necessarily pursuing, but was following the bus for some time here before the CHP kind of took over here. We see another additional unit of the CHP uh, on the ground who is uh, now catching up uh, to the two additional units who were uh, right behind the bus. So that's kind of what we're looking at right now. From what we understand, only the driver uh, on board the bus, uh, but that has not been confirmed. Of course, there might be uh, additional people or additional suspects in this case. We understand uh, that the initial report that it was only a driver, so we'll kind of see how that uh, plays out. Uh, of course, uh, when this thing does end, uh, they're going to want to have a look at uh, the inside of that bus to see whoever else might be in there. But uh, 
Again, northbound on the 14 freeway here, and uh, we are now heading over towards the Sand Canyon area out of Newhall. Ultimately, if you kind of follow us through here, we'll be going uh, through Acton over towards uh, the Palmdale-Lancaster area. No signs of slowing down at this point, no signs of giving up. Uh, we certainly hope that this guy chooses uh, to do the right thing here and uh, pull over and give himself or herself up peacefully. But uh, to this point, still not happening, and uh, we are just now coming up on, uh, well, uh, Sand Canyon in a couple of miles to Newhall Avenue into Santa Clarita as we follow this uh, stolen limo bus up the 14 freeway here. Gals? Yeah, and, and we started okay. tracking this and seeing reports of this about a half hour ago. And so far, it's been sort of what we're seeing now. The, the party bus going, you know, 60, upwards of 70 miles per hour, 80 miles per hour, just sort of, you know, coasting up the freeway, the 405 north up to the 5, and now on the 14 headed towards Santa Clarita. And further beyond that would be Palmdale and Lancaster. There have been uh, two CHP units in pursuit, Mark Kona was saying. And the the party bus has continued on a party of one, according to the initial reports that <laughs> nice we have. Lord. But we we aren't sure if perhaps somebody else is in this vehicle. But we do believe it to be stolen, and uh, it is. Uh, there it goes. Continuing on the 14, you know, getting slowed down a little bit by a van a ahead of it. Um, it has gotten over to the slow lane. At times we've seen it in the carpool lane and, and the faster lanes to the left. And uh, who knows what, what the driver's planning. At you got you got to wonder what that uh, driver of that van in front of him is thinking as he sees this big bus behind him and then you know vehicles in pursuit and helicopters hovering above uh, Mark Kono who's above in Sky 5 I'm curious yeah, you know considering your extensive coverage of so many chases in the Los Angeles area what is the method or strategy that CHP uses when you have a car in this case a party bus that's kind of just flowing along on the freeway you know not doing anything too dangerous or, or you know, weaving in and out of traffic, what will be their plan of action, do you think? Well, time is on the side of the officers, obviously, here, so they're not going to be in a big hurry to get this thing stopped. They're just going to kind of bide their time, and uh, they don't know how much fuel is on board. This thing might, in fact, run out of fuel at some point, but uh, uh, they are talking about the possibility of a spike strip, so that could come into play depending on traffic conditions up ahead. So uh, that uh, is something that we have seen even at freeway speed, so uh, a spike strip could come into play. Uh, at some point in the future here. We just don't know, but uh, again, that could be a strategy that the CHP uh, kind of utilizes here. Obviously, they know it's coming up the 14 freeway here, and uh, with traffic kind of thinning out up ahead, uh, they might be able to strategically uh, place a spike strip uh, uh, in front of the limo bus as it is coming by here. But, uh, you know, again, a thing with uh, traffic uh, conditions, uh, he's in a little pocket of, uh, you know, slower moving vehicles here. He's trucking along probably at about 70, 80 miles an hour, doing the best he can to just kind of maintain a speed uh, going up the 14 freeway, the Antelope Valley freeway here. So we saw him going from the slow lane. Now he's all the way off to the left lane. So driving uh, somewhat erratically, uh, not out of control, would I say, but uh, at some point, uh, you know, he is just kind of weaving in and out, just doing what he can to avoid uh, having to slow down and stop. But uh, again, that being the case, uh, you know, perhaps up ahead they might be able to spike him and uh, that might slow this uh, limo bus down. But uh, again, that is something we will see. Uh, as we mentioned, you know, time is going to be on the side of the CHP in this case. They have uh, multiple uh, resources uh, on scene up ahead uh, to be able to follow this guy as far as they need to. So ultimately, this guy is going to end up stopping one way or another. It's yeah. just a matter of when and how. So Absolutely. Uh, we're so just going to have to follow it. Yeah, Mark, Go we're going to have you keep watching from overhead, but we actually are joined on the phone right now by CHP officer Jose Barrios. And uh, what can you tell us at this point about what's going on with this apparently stolen party bus? Uh, yes, just that we got the call about 11:30 that you know this uh, party bus was stolen out of San Diego area, and we've been in pursuit ever since. And what do we know? How do we know it's stolen? How did the call come in? Uh, we got we got a call from uh, confirmed with San Diego uh, Police Department. That's where it was reported stolen. So that's what we confirmed. The only thing we don't know is uh, how many people are actually inside the bus. Um, it's, as you can see, it's tinted windows, so it's really hard to get a. Uh, head count of see who's in the actual uh, party bus. So we had had reports that one person was inside, but is that perhaps just that at least one person is inside, but it's unknown exactly what the situation is in the bus? Correct. We don't have that information. 
And officer, we're curious, what is your plan of action? Because this guy's kind of just coasting along the freeway now, several different LA area freeways from the 405, now the 14. Um, what, what will you guys do? Time is, is likely on your side. Will you deploy a spike strip? What's the next course of action? Uh, just that. We're just going to hopefully, he pulls over or if he runs out of gas. Uh, but as far as uh, deploying a spike strip, it's going to depend on the condition of the speed and traffic. We always want to uh, make sure, you know, the safety of other motorists are uh, not endangered by this individual. And every chase that ensues is obviously a unique situation. But in this case, he, he seemed to be coasting, but then we noticed him just now in the last few minutes changing his behavior a little bit, speeding up uh, quite significantly and then slowing down and then kind of weaving a little bit more. What is the behavior that you've noticed, and um, is there any indication this person could be under the influence? Is it just too hard to tell at this point? It's too hard to tell. It's, uh, like you said, there's a lot of unknown variables, so we can't really say if he's under the influence or not. Um, his erratic driving is definitely not a uh, safe thing to do, especially even though there's uh, low traffic. Um, it's a it's a party bus. It's a big bus. It uh, can be considered a dangerous weapon if it were to crash into something. So we're definitely going to make sure we follow him. And like I said, hopefully he runs out of gas and it doesn't hurt anybody in the process. How long could it take for a bus like that to run out of gas? How long could this thing go if it just is left to that point? It, it varies. Like we don't know how much gas it had when they when he stole it. So it could be a full tank of gas, could be half a tank. So it's kind of hard to tell. We're just going to monitor it and you know keep our distance and make sure he uh, comes to a stop eventually. Officer, do you have any information on the owner of this of this party bus? Because we were told that for some time he was actually trying to follow his uh, own van that was stolen. No, we don't have any information about the uh, actual uh, owner. I know there was somebody behind following it, but uh, that's not the case anymore. Now, of course, we, we cover a lot of pursuits, and, and you're involved in them. When was the last time you recall a, a party bus? It's sort of an unusual vehicle, it would seem. It, it is. Uh, maybe a couple years ago, there was an actual bus that was stolen as well, or a motorhome. Uh, that was the most recent one with the high-profile vehicle. Like that. It was a motorhome. I don't know if you remember. It might have been about two years ago, and it was yeah. just driving recklessly throughout L.A. County. And what would be something that would change the course to where you didn't just wait for the bus to run out of gas, where you might use some kind of a different tactic? And what might those other tactics at your disposal be, given the location of this bus on the freeway? Unfortunately, with this type of vehicle, our options are very limited. It's a, it's a huge vehicle. Uh, we, it, we can't do the pit maneuver on it because it's such a large vehicle. We could definitely fry, but it's probably going to damage our our vehicles and might hurt our officers. So we're probably just going to let it run its course and hopefully it doesn't hurt anybody. And I'm sure each time that you're following a, a car, you're assessing you know the level of danger to the local community. How? how how dangerous is this one compared to what you've seen? Like, how are you breaking this one down? Um, well, for right now, the bus, like I said, uh, speeding, failing to pull over, and luckily there's not that much traffic. We're going to have to evaluate once it does hit kind of pocket of traffic, see what he's going to do. He, if he starts ramming vehicles or stuff like that, we might start, you know, get closer, try to stop him, do an intervention, you know, possibly get in front of the uh, bus if, uh, if it come to that point. All right, CHP officer Jose Barrios, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate all of your insight and uh, from what I understand, right now we have the owner. We're, we're, uh, we're going to oh, have her in a few moments. moments. Okay. We're going to have the owner of the party bus company. So, very interesting to hear what she has to say, but in the meantime, let's sort of reset for people that are just joining in what we are following. This is a pursuit, a CHP pursuit involving a stolen party bus. Yes, it is a party bus. Unclear exactly how many people are on it. At least one, of course, the driver. Now, according to CHP officials, an officer we just spoke to, this started in San Diego. And then they caught up with them, and, and we've been following this for about uh, the last half hour or so. Uh, we saw the party bus go on the 405 North, uh, starting sort of the west side of LA, up on the 5, and getting onto the 14, now heading out. Uh, Toward Santa Clarita, now passed to Agua Dulce, and would be headed in the direction of Palmdale and Lancaster. 
now this is not uh, a situation where uh, CHP is going to do anything immediately. Uh, they said they might just wait for the, the bus to run out of gas. Right. We and do Oh, sorry about that. This is Top Dog Limo Bus, uh, which is a party bus company out of San Diego. And right now we have Susie Lightsky, who is the owner, I believe, of either the, the company or this van. Susie, are you here with us? Yes, I am. Thank you so much for joining. Sorry this is happening. It, it might be, it must be something to see uh, your own vehicle on the news, not something you see every day. Um, what can you tell us about what happened? Uh, we went to go ahead and do a pickup, and um, my driver um, apparently, you know, walked out the um, out of the bus to go ahead and pick up one of our clients, and the person jumped into the bus and stole it. Oh my God! A random wow. person. A random person jumped onto the bus at the at the pickup location. Is that what you're saying? That's correct. Wow, what was this pickup? Was it a residence or a business? And what area? It's a residence here in Pacific Beach. So, uh, up in um, Marina. So, here it's in San Diego. So, then we heard uh, CHP had mentioned that the owner or someone involved, perhaps it was the driver, was actually trying to follow the stolen vehicle for quite some time. Is, is that right? Can you tell us what happened in the moments after the party bus was stolen? Uh, we had police um, over here in San Diego looking around. Um, they had helicopters. And they did searches, but then we didn't hear anything. About an hour and a um, half later, we get a call from um, a driver at, uh, off the 405 explaining to us that he was complaining that our bus was there and the, um, the person driving it was driving crazy on the freeway and doing 90 miles an hour. And uh, I explained to him that was a stolen bus, and he he stayed on the phone until we called dispatch and got somebody out there. Oh my God! So actually, a driver on the freeway called your company and said, "Hey, one of your buses is okay. driving crazy." Yes. <laughs> oh, oh my, my gosh. gosh, that's crazy. <laughs> Well, at least you were able to locate it that way, and I'm sure um, that was quite a moment for both the person calling that certainly they did not expect. Yes. Right? And how is the driver doing? <laughs> yeah. How is the driver doing of the of the bus that was supposed to be, you know, having a normal day at work, and then all of a sudden the bus gets stolen? How's the driver doing? Oh, he was a little shocked, but he went. He, we went ahead and um, got another bus out there, and he took his clients out. And uh, right now, we're doing a switch with another driver, so um, he can come back here to the office. That is well, a commitment. What's going on right now? I'm going to have to tell him in a little bit. <laughs> that oh is my commitment. Gosh. He continued with his day at work. Uh, uh, is there a description of the driver? Did did your driver get a good look at the person that stole the vehicle? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, and and so do you believe then that there's just one person in this vehicle? Given what happened, did anybody see the the driver steal this vehicle, and was it just one person? Yeah, I'm not sure if it's one person or anything, honestly. So what's your what's your message to people? Maybe uh, not to blame talk. Top dog limo bus for this. Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, you know what? I really appreciate that. Um, that if you do see something going wrong with the buses, that you do call the company straight, um, you know, and uh, and make that complaint, and uh, so that way we can do something about it. I appreciate the dispatchers, everybody, the the police, everybody, this helping us get this bus back and get it off the road, so there's no danger to uh, to the other vehicles out there. Absolutely. And Susie, do you have a sense of how much gas this bus had in its tank when it was there for the pickup? And then given that, how long it would be able to travel before running out? I, I don't know. It's a full tank, though. Full tank. So it left San Diego with a full tank of gas. So as long as that lasts is how long this pursuit could last, sounds like. Yes. What is your reaction to all of this? Ah. Uh. I'm shocked. <laughs> <laughs> and are you able to watch this pursuit overhead? I know you're in San Diego. I don't know if if San Diego stations no, are following we see the pursuit. It on TV right now. You do on your channel. On channel yeah. five. I was going to say we stream live. Download our app. <laughs> yeah, you can see it all unfold. Yeah. Um, you know, Susie, I, my car was stolen once, and there was a pursuit down the 10 to the 405. 
And uh, so I can really empathize with how you're feeling right now. Hopefully this is recovered in good condition and you just have to do a deep clean and you're good to go. Um, but I'm sure you have insurance and all of that. Any other, any other thoughts um, or reaction that you'd like to share with us this afternoon? Oh, no, I think that's it. Thank you guys very much. All right, we, we really appreciate you taking the time in the midst of all this. And again, we hope that it comes to a peaceful uh, ending with, with no damage to your party bus. Thank you so much. Again, that is Susie Leitsky with Top Dog Limo Bus, the owner of the company uh, that owns this stolen party bus that is now in the 14 after a lengthy pursuit from San Diego. And uh, we just heard a lot of insight from the owner about how this transpired, how her driver was picking up and just stepped out of the bus for a quick second. And before he knew it, one person jumped into the bus and took off with a full tank of gas. So this could go for quite some time. Unfortunately, the driver did not get a good look uh, at the person who stole the car, but believes there's just one person inside. Yeah, and so this pursuit, for those who are just joining us, the time is 1230. Uh, this started a little earlier this morning, a couple hours ago now, according to the San Diego PD. It was around 1015 this morning that this bus was reported stolen uh, in San Diego on Moreno Boulevard uh, when, as Christina said, a random person jumped in and took it while the intended driver of the party bus got out to pick up some clients, keys in the ignition. So uh, the person steals the bus, takes off, heads up the, the freeway, and then at some point, someone actually calls the party bus company complaining that one of their drivers is driving erratically on the freeway. So that was then another point at which this, this vehicle was discovered. We've been following the pursuit from the L.A. area where uh, on the 405 North, the bus headed up. Uh, the 405 and then the, got onto the 5 and now onto the 14, headed out, uh, now Acton is the area and CHP has been in pursuit. Uh, we've been on this for at least uh, 30 minutes and Mark Kono's overhead. He's been watching it all. Now the bus is going a little faster than it has been. Uh, 80, well, now it's going down in yeah, the 70s, but we 74 saw... 74 to 90. Yeah, we got, saw as high as 90. Quite the range. So let's go up to Mark Kono and Sky 5. And also, Mark, I understand because of the range of our helicopter, we may lose the signal for some reason at some point soon. Mark, are you with us? So we may not have okay. Mark at... Oh. Well, here we go. Uh, well, hopefully the signal holds here, guys. So we're uh, we've up at about 4,500 feet here kind of following uh, this party bus here through the Acton area now. So we just uh, pulled into the Acton area, and now we'll be uh, heading over towards Lake Los Angeles here. But uh, we just passed uh, Sierra Highway, one of the offs for Sierra Highway here, and he's just kind of moving along uh, that 14 freeway here. This 14 freeway for now is uh, yeah, somewhat lightly traveled here. Just off your right there, although I do have you. Somewhat lightly traveled here, and uh, he's just kind of making his way through, meandering across uh, lanes of traffic here, moving from the slow lane to the fast lane. But, uh, you know, as you can see here, there is uh, plenty of opportunity, plenty of room for the CHP to maneuver into position uh, should they choose to. But uh, at this point, uh, a pit maneuver is not going to be likely, but uh, something on the order of a spike strip could be possible uh, if it's safe enough to deploy. So that's kind of what we're watching for right now. Uh, earlier on, they did attempt a spike strip uh, about five miles ago. Unfortunately, he uh, might have saw it, but uh, was able to uh, turn and swerve away from the spikes, and so uh, that didn't work. But uh, again, uh, we, time is on the side of the CHP in this case, so uh, they certainly have the time and the resources to stay ahead of this guy as he kind of trucks along and moves uh, northbound on the 14 freeway. I'll try and get uh, a locator for you here shortly. I think, uh, yeah, da -da -da, hang on a second here. Uh, this is going to be Santiago Road. Mm -hmm. Santiago Road that he's just uh, crossed over right now, and so. Uh, in and out of the Acton area here, and uh, we'll be heading in towards uh, the Palmdale area here shortly. But uh, again, several vehicles of the CHP are now uh, kind of tracking this guy, and uh, hopefully they can get up ahead with a spike and uh, a spike strip, and maybe uh, immobilize the the limo bus uh, in some way, and uh, at least get him slowed down or incapacitate the uh, you know the bus in some way so that he would be forced to uh, slow down and stop. So uh, to this point, it doesn't look like the driver's looking to give up. Uh, in that this guy uh, is coming out of uh, the San Diego area, pr uh, probably a situation where they came up the 5 freeway or the 405, 
and uh, made their way to the five, and now the 14 freeway here. Uh, with a full tank of gas, who knows how far this guy wants to take it, and uh, if he even knows uh, where he is going. Is he just kind of going north in a general direction, or or does he have a destination in mind? Uh, it's just uh, who knows at this point here. So right now the CHP, they're just kind of tucking in close behind, keeping tabs on them. There's a CHP helicopter that pulled up uh, about 10 minutes ago, and now they're tracking as well. And, uh, you know, out of the Acton area, we'll be pulling into Palmdale here in the next couple of miles, and we'll see what he chooses to do here, guys. Yeah, and you said time is on the side of those CHP officers, and you wonder if time is on the side okay. of the party bus driver or how much longer that bus could go. We learned from the owner of the company that it is a full tank of gas, but she didn't know how long uh, that could really last. She didn't have a sense of how many miles. By uh, my rough calculation on, on uh, the Google Maps, uh, could be 165 miles that this bus has driven so far from uh, the Morena Boulevard area that it was taken in San Diego and stolen and now to the Acton area where it is now. So how much longer we don't really know but the uh, CHP officer we spoke to on the phone recently did say that that was one of the likely options available to those CHP officers in pursuit was just to you know continue following this party bus uh, until it runs out of gas and that this pursuit could come to an end that way. Uh, the CHP officer we spoke to also saying that there are more limited options given the type of vehicle that they are pursuing, given that it is a bus, a party bus, that a pit maneuver, for example, would be difficult or not something that they would be likely to choose in this scenario, so that things may be more limited given the vehicle. Uh, it is slowing down a bit. Yeah, quite significantly, just about 50 miles per hour at this point following behind that truck. Slowly, you kind of wonder if at any point he's going to get off, but ahead of him, I mean, it's just all open roads as we're looking at uh, some of the traffic situation here on Google Maps. You will see him go through Lancaster perhaps if he keeps going and then some of these small uh, cities in the Antelope Valley and it's just you know you wonder what his plan of action is or if he even has any idea but uh, slowing He's down. Really slow. He's really getting off. He's getting off the freeway. Oh, yep there he goes. He appears to be getting off the freeway. And he's sticking behind that truck, which is interesting because uh, he could get around if he wanted to evade the police. Mark Kono and Sky Five, what do you what do you got for us? Uh, well, I think uh, that truck is just kind of in his way, so he'll likely try and find a way around it at some point if he's uh, looking to continue the pursuit here. But if he's looking to give up here, he's just exited the north bound side of the 14 freeway at Pear Blossom Highway here. So Pear Blossom Highway is where we've gotten off here. If he makes the left turn. Uh, if it looks like uh, he's making that left turn, he's going to uh, will be uh, entering Pear Blossom Highway, and that could uh, you know potentially take him across the desert. So we'll see what he does uh, because of the truck that's in front of him, uh, which is now pulling over. He is just going to continue here. So yeah, he was just kind of stuck behind that uh, truck there, and now he is kind of continuing uh, underneath the off ramp there, and now he is continuing along. Pear Blossom Highway. I don't know that he's going to make any erratic turns to get back on the freeway going the other way or anything, but certainly that could be a possibility. Uh, Rich, hang on right. Uh, widen out right there. What was that? Okay. Uh, I thought that perhaps that might be a CHP officer or someone staged there, but uh, uh, sort of. it looks like um, he is just now going to continue along Pear Blossom Highway. So this might uh, open up a couple of opportunities for the CHP in that uh, speeds along Pear Blossom Highway typically are a little bit slower here with fewer traffic, uh, fewer cars here, but uh, uh, that being the case, there's also no median, no center medium dividing uh, the north and southbound or up ahead the east and westbound lanes of Pear Blossom Highway here right now. You can see uh, the possibility for uh, the driver to do something pretty pretty dangerous here uh, as uh, it is possible for this person to enter the wrong lanes of traffic. So we'll see what uh, this person does here. He is being pursued by three units that I can tell of the CHP here. Okay. Yeah, I've got them. Uh, three units of the CHP pa passing that intersection. And uh, again, just kind of weaving in and out uh, as traffic of, you know, avoidance uh, requires him to. Right now, he's going to have to. Oh! Oh, gosh. Wow. Oh, no. Okay. Wow. Man. Now it's getting. He hit even that more car. Oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. He rear ended that car violently. That was a bad, bad hit, guys. Oh, I was looking out the window as that happened. Uh, no word on. Uh, what might this guy be thinking here? But uh, the three units of the CHP are now out of their cars behind, 
and they're trying to get an eye on what this guy is doing here. Guns are out. Uh, they're looking north on Pear Blossom Highway. Traffic up ahead of them, but going the other way, is now stopped on the right-hand shoulder here. And uh, in fact, a couple of them are turning around here. Rich, just stay right where you are. Uh, traffic going the other way is now turning around on Pear Blossom Highway here. So uh, just an exceedingly dangerous situation in that that was a pretty dangerous move here. So uh, he was coming up on two cars and at a pretty high rate of speed here, those two cars were obviously moving slower and he just kind of punched that car at the back there and did some heavy damage to it. Hopefully the people will be okay, but uh, you could see that the car sustained some pretty heavy damage as it was rolling forward. So uh, right now we're just kind of waiting to see what happens here. And Mark, uh, it, hopefully it, this, it, looks, it like looks like there's a, a citizen out. on the right side who just someone's happened. getting out of the car. Oh, and someone's hands got up. out of the car yep. hands up as well. Surrender yep, it looks like we have someone coming out of the car or out of the limo bus looking to give up peacefully, hands up, backing up towards CHP officers. And hopefully this uh, ends peacefully here, but, uh, you know, uh, of course our thoughts are going to be with the uh, motorist who this person uh, rear-ended just moments ago here. So once they are able to get to that person, hopefully they will be okay. But uh, in the meantime, it looks like this person now giving up, hands up, and now being taken into custody by the CHP here. You know, at some point, uh, they are going to have to approach that uh, that limo bus here with uh, the tinted windows there, and they're going to have to make an approach to that bus to make sure that there's no one else uh, who they might consider a suspect on board the bus here. So uh, if this is the only person, uh, that's uh, probably some pretty good news here. They have the suspect in custody. They're still going to have to go through the process of clearing the bus, and then they're going to have to get to that motorist who was hit uh, rear-ended by this bus and uh, hopefully tend to them. So, uh, again, this is Pear Blossom Highway. We're just about a mile, uh, maybe a mile and a half off the 14 freeway where you saw him uh, exit the freeway about five minutes ago. So uh, now that person is in custody, and at some point they will uh, make, an, make an approach uh, to the bus here. Rich is telling me that this looks like a female here. Uh, my monitor is a little bit small, so I can't really tell. It, it but does uh, it appear looks like a female, a female. who might have been driving mm -hmm. the vehicle. She it's is now in custody, but uh, yeah, uh, okay. If we go to the bus, if we go to the bus, Rich, they're making the approach. Okay, there we go. So here, officers. All are right. So they have approached the, the back of the bus, uh, back door open, and they are just now going to clear the bus. You can see the guns drawn there, just in case there are additional suspects in there. Out of an abundance of caution, the CHP officers are not going to take any chances, uh, given the possibility that there might be further uh, suspects on board here. So uh, right now, they're just kind of guns drawn, walking around the bus, looking through windows. And uh, hopefully, if this bus is clear, uh, they can, uh, in the next few minutes, get this thing off Pear Blossom Highway. Of course, tend to that injured motors or tend to the motors who was rear-ended there. But uh, there you go. There's the signal, code four. So all clear. Oh. That bus has been cleared. And uh, now uh, that is going to be a look at the traffic coming the other way. In other words, southbound or uh, eastbound along Pear Blossom Highway going over towards the 14. A lot of people were uh, actually making U-turns once they saw these this activity that was coming towards them. So uh, there you go. Have a look at that, guys. Wow. Yeah, Oof. and, and we're, we're re-watching when the party bus hit another vehicle and actually pushes it onto the wrong side of the road. Yeah, and then you have, uh, right now you have, I don't know if that's the driver of that car. It looks like maybe someone stopped yeah. to check in on the driver who was hit, but imagine how shaken up they must be. That was a major impact, and it looked like perhaps the airbag had been deployed in the party bus. I wonder if there's any sort of demobilization um, that comes into play when, when that car, since it's a, a corporate car, is involved in a big accident like this. But then on the right side of the road, you also had another car that was kind of stuck that was uh, pulled over. The guy got out and hid behind his car as police approached the party bus with guns drawn. So it looks like CHP is now approaching the vehicle where, where another motorist was hit and perhaps maybe that's a good Samaritan that is checking on the vehicle or the driver of the car. We're not exactly sure. Um, you know, this is two and a half hours after that party bus was reported stolen that we saw the suspect uh, finally surrender. Uh, it was after a, a car crash. It hit another vehicle while driving on Pear Blossom Highway. And then a few minutes later, the, the driver of the party bus, the stolen party bus, the, the subject of the pursuit did get out of the vehicle and surrender, follow uh, officer orders. It appeared, uh, it appears to be a, a woman, a female suspect. Uh, we, we really don't know anything about the suspect other than 
what the driver of the limo company told us, which is that at around 10:15, uh, this person is accused of, of stealing a party bus that had keys in the ignition, and the driver had gotten out to go pick up some clients, and just in that time, just a random person stole that party bus, taking it from San Diego all the way up to our region, uh, which is when we caught up with it in Los Angeles on the 405, and then continued up onto the 14 freeway and then onto Pear Blossom Highway in the Antelope Valley areas. Uh, and, and then this, this came to a violent end yeah. when when the, the, the party bus driver hit another vehicle, uh, pushing it to the wrong side of the road, just collapsing the back of that vehicle. And, and we don't know how any occupants in that vehicle are doing. We did see uh, CHP go over to offer assistance and and no ambulance there yet. So, uh, you know, we are awaiting word of if the, the person or people in that vehicle are okay. Yeah. What's interesting to, to consider is, so I, I had my car stolen before, and so I've been through the process a little bit. When you make, you know, the call to 911, you report it, depending on the agency, they'll handle it a little bit differently. Um, mine ended up being in multiple jurisdictions, so LAPD got involved and they had a chopper and more resources, but uh, this started in San Diego, so, you know, they probably called the local agency there and unless there's a tracker on the bus then you kind of just wait and and see if anyone reports having spotted it and you, you try to figure out where it went because you know this is a, a massive region and what it was according to the owner of top dog limo bus which owns this bus uh, they told us that a person who was driving on the freeway in the la area called the company to complain about the erratic driving of the driver and then was informed that the, the party bus was actually stolen. I mean, not something that you see on the freeways of Los Angeles every day. Yeah. Yeah, and San Diego PD was actually not involved in pursuit of the vehicle since it was located later. So it may have been that very call, Christina, that you mentioned that tipped off authorities and, and perhaps launched this pursuit that we've been following now uh, for some time, at least the last 45 minutes, uh, which came to a peaceful end in the sense that the suspect surrendered. But we don't know uh, how the person in this vehicle that you're seeing is doing. Uh, this car was hit uh, that sort of uh, precipitated the arrest of the suspect in this pursuit we've been following now that, that has come to an end. So we'll continue you to keep you posted, but we're going to go ahead and take a quick break.